Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Melodyne to create artificial backing harmonies. Um, you can use this for vocals, or you can use this for some instruments. Obviously, it doesn't work on all instruments, nor does it work on all vocals, but I find it a really cool way to create harmonies on the fly and experiment with harmonies based off of a lead vocal. Now, I'm not saying that this is any better or worse than simply learning the harmony and singing it in on top of your lead vocal or underneath your lead vocal. I'm not saying it's any better than that or any worse than that, really. It's just different, and it gives you a very specific harmony sound that's very, very in time and very aligned with the original lead vocal because it is a copy of the lead vocal that has been pitch shifted in different ways. Um, so it's a little bit different than just stacking vocal harmonies on top of what you have. I also find it uh, incredibly useful when you use it in conjunction with real harmonies. You create artificial harmonies and real harmonies, stack them together, and you get this kind of really cool thick uh, sort of chorus, uh, almost choir-like uh, sound. Let me play a little bit of the session uh, that I had in my Logic 101 series that I just finished up. A lot of people were asking how I did that, and so I'm gonna use the exact same session to demonstrate that. So I pulled off all of the vocal effects other than EQ and compression, and uh, I also turned off all the mastering uh, plugins. Let's just solo out the lead vocal and the artificial harmony in the first verse. With every turn I seek an answer to the past. These wasted days with you been putting myself last. But all that's gone, and never again will I be torn. So you can hear there's a combination of harmonies above and harmonies below, and they're all derived from the lead vocal. Um, so it helps if you've already tuned up your lead vocal, which I already have in this recording. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna, um, just gonna solo just the lead vocal. I'm going to duplicate the lead vocal by clicking here, and I'm going to hold Option and pull down um, a copy of that region. So we're just dealing with basically two lead vocals now. So before any effects that I have in the, on the track, I'm gonna uh, put the Melodyne plugin on the, the copy. So I'm gonna call this uh, Vocal Harmony, because this is the track we're gonna create our harmony on. Um, so before our first plugin, um, you always want to put Melodyne first in your plugin chain, because you don't want to run any of the effects through Melodyne. You want to run just the raw vocal into Melodyne and then uh, put it through all of your effects. So I'm gonna go to Celimony, we'll go to Melodyne. All right, so I'm using uh, the Melodyne Studio version. Uh, this pretty much works with all of the versions of Melodyne. It's a matter of certain tools being left out in some of the cheaper versions. Like for instance, in some of the cheaper versions of Melodyne, you don't get the uh, pitch uh, modulation tool, which is gonna be really helpful to pull down the vibrato in our harmony, but you can still create basic harmonies even with like the most basic version of Melodyne. So what I'm gonna do is, now that I've got my Melodyne uh, plugin on that uh, vocal track, I'm going to just solo that one out, and I'm gonna hit transfer up here, and I'm gonna make sure my playhead goes before uh, the first phrase, and I'm gonna let this play through the whole verse, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna print uh, the audio data from that verse into the Melodyne plugin. So I'm just gonna hit play and we'll listen to it through. With every turn I seek an answer to the past These wasted days with you been putting myself last But all that's gone and never again will I be torn between the wall and you and me, a bridge that must be burned. All right, there we go. It's automatically uh, switched to monophonic detection, meaning one note at a time. If for some reason it starts breaking things up into multiple notes, go up to your algorithm up here and go down to melodic and choose that as your, uh, your starting point uh, for the next transfer. So as you can see, Melodyne's automatically tried to extrapolate the key of the song, C minor, and it's correct here. Um, I will say that Melodyne is not perfect. It doesn't always get the key correct. 
In order to do this, it helps to have a little bit of basic knowledge in Melodyne. So I'm not going to go through the basics. I have another video on that if you want to watch that. And it also helps to have some uh, knowledge of scales and keys, which I I'll try to touch on a little of that, but it that's that would be a topic that's way too far out there for this short video. Um, so I'm just going to set my cycle range around the very first phrase. And we're going to do this phrase at a time. So let me solo uh, my lead vocal and now my harmony track. And you're just going to hear both of them playing at the same time. With every turn I seek. So all you're really hearing is you're just hearing two uh, of the lead vocal uh, playing in unison. So if I were to drag over these notes and pull them up or down, you're going to hear them in harmony. With every turn I seek an answer to the past. Now it doesn't sound great because we just are we're just basically creating parallel harmony. We're not staying within the key of C minor when you just haphazardly drag things up and down. The other thing is you'll notice that in, in my original um, harmonies that I created, I don't use every single word of each phrase for the harmony. In some points, I drop out vocals, and I find this a really good technique um, to kind of just not make it sound one dimensional. You know, I don't necessarily need a harmony on every single word I'm singing. With every turn I seek. So in this one, I just put it on turn I seek. Every turn I seek. So you can actually drag over notes that you don't want and hit delete. And now it'll just start at turn I seek. Turn I seek. An answer to the past. An answer to the past is in there as well. There's a little noise here, so I'm just going to delete that. It's me just breathing. You'll also notice here uh, the word past. It's, it's actually two notes in the line. Uh, in the uh, the note there, the blob, whatever you want to call it, is um, showing us that. So we can actually double click to split this up into two different notes. Now, in the original, this first turn I seek was actually lower. I find the best way to harmonize is to start by harmonizing up or down by a third within the key. Um, you can also do fourths and fifths. You can also do sixths. For this first um, phrase here, I'm actually going to pull this down a third within the key of C minor. So I have the starting note of F here, and I want to move down three notes in the key of C minor. Well, if you know the key of C minor, the notes are C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. So I'm going to drag over all of this and go down three notes. So the next note down in the key of C minor is E flat, <laughs> then D. <laughs> And let's see what that sounds like. With every turn I seek. Now notice that one of the notes is outside of the key of C minor, this E here. So let's try something. I'm going to drag over this, go up to this uh, button right here, and we're going to snap to C minor, and we're going to pull the pitch center up. What this is going to do is it's going to tune any notes that are outside of the key. With every turn I seek. All of a sudden it sounds a lot better because we're conforming that harmony back to C minor and not a parallel harmony anymore. An answer to the past. Let's try it here. But this time, instead of going down three, I'm going to try going up three. So starting on a reference note of C here, I'm going to go up to D and then up to E flat within the key of C minor. Now, if you're not great with scales and keys or music theory, um, go print out a scale chart. You know, I'm sure if, as long as you know how to read basic notes on Google, you can just go find a chart, I'm sure, somewhere with like every single scale and key on it to help you. So I'm going to drag over all this and let's snap this to C minor now. With every turn I seek an answer to the past. Now that didn't work out so great. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. This note, instead of going down to F, I really wanted it to go up to G. These notes ended up going down to C instead of going up to D, so I'm going to move them up. With every turn I seek an answer to the past. So even though I have a, a pretty good understanding of music theory, and harmony, it, there's still some trial and error. I'm also going to split this note up here because I feel like it, it just wants to be split up. An answer to the past. There we go. Now, another thing I like to do with my harmonies is I like to retune them. And then I also like to um, lower the amount of vibrato in the note. And the way you can do that is with the pitch modulation tool that I talked about earlier. 
Now, if you're using one of the cheaper versions of Melodyne, you're not going to be able to do this, but I like to just lower this down just a little bit. And sometimes I'll just double click on it and make it completely flat. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. It depends on the genre. For rock music, I don't want it to be completely flat. That might work for pop music or EDM. So let me pull this down to like 50%. And you can see the amount that you've tuned it right up here. So let's listen to this first phrase now. With every turn I seek an answer to the past. Cool. So let's move on to the next phrase here. These wasted days with you, been putting myself last. So maybe I just want been putting myself last uh, to be harmonized. So I can delete the notes that I don't want. Been putting myself last. So I'm going to drag over all these, pull them up a third within the key. Uh, been putting myself last. And you'll notice that you'll find a pattern sometimes. Like here's that F sharp that I, if I try to retune this, it's probably going to tune it down to F again. Let's pull it up to G, <laughs> similar like we did before. Um, here's these D flats that don't belong in C minor. Let's pull them up to D. So let's give this a shot now. You been putting myself last. Okay, those last two notes don't really sound great. So sometimes moving up or down a third consistently doesn't always work. So let's try making these notes resolve on C, the key of the song. Uh, you been putting myself last. Uh. So sometimes you have to switch to fourths. Um, or, you know, or fifths, you know, so that's basically what I've done here is I've just by trial and error I've chosen a different note because it just didn't sound right. So let's go back and we will use the pitch modulation tool uh, Tune that down to 50% a lot of times I'll do is I'll wait for the very end I'll hit command a and I'll do the pitch modulation on all of the notes all at once But just for this tutorial, I'll do it this way. So let's move on to the next phrase but all that's gone, and never again will I be torn. So the never again will I be torn. I, don't, I think it's just again will I be torn actually is the part that I want. It's gone, and never again. Yeah, so on again of never again. Again will I be torn. There's a couple notes here that need to be broken up. So let's do that. Again will I be torn. This needs to be broken up as well. So this resolves down to C. Um, kind of a rule of thumb is when you have a phrase that resolves down to the tonic note of the key, um, you can kind of go up a third and it'll usually work. If you have something that resolves on the third of the key, you may want to try resolving or try harmonizing down a third. Uh, but that's just a quick little rule of thumb. It doesn't always work that way. So let's uh, pull this up a third. Um, once again, I go with these F sharps. Let's make those G uh, naturals. And everything else looks okay. Let's retune this little phrase here. And then we'll apply our pitch modulation to it once again. There you go, 50%. Can will I be torn? Let's listen to that. But all that's gone, and never again will I be torn. So the very last phrase. Between the wall and you and me. I think it's on you and me, yeah. So between the wall is taken out. And you and me. I'm going to separate that note. And you and me. I'm also going to take out the and of you and me. It'd just be you and me. You and me. So this is one where it ends on a third, the E flat, the third note of uh, C minor. So let's try pulling this down. B. Let's pull our E down to E flat. Uh. Let's retune this little sequence here. And let's pull the pitch modulation me. down. Now, sometimes you'll find weird stuff like this. You and me, you and me. You know, you may want to go in here and cut this note up, see if that works a little bit better. You can also join notes back together if you hover over the separation and double click. So that may help this phrase a little bit. Let's retune that and let's try that again. Me. So I'm at 52%. On this last note, let's use the pitch drift tool me. just to level it out a bit. You and me. By itself, sounds a little robotic, a little weird. And then with the lead vocal. Between the wall and you, you and me, me, a bridge. And then just our very last phrase here. 
a bridge that must be burned. That ends on C, so let's try uh, rolling this all up a third. Uh, the D flat can become D. Uh, the G flat can become G. Bridge. And I'm gonna separate this note and get rid of this little a bridge. Bridge that must be burned. Yeah, so just bridge that must be burned as opposed to a bridged. And sometimes I find little scoops up and down at the end of notes. You can get rid of those too. They just add extra noise to the signal that we don't necessarily want. So let's retune this. Let's change its pitch, its pitch uh, modulation. There we go. Bridge that must be burned. So let's listen to the whole thing now, the whole harmony. Let's see what it sounds like. One of the things I like to do with harmonies, obviously I want the harmony to be lower than the lead vocal, so I'll pull down the, the volume a bit. I'll also pan it off a little bit to the left or to the right. And I'll also change up the EQ on it. You can see I've got a pretty high-end uh, boost here. I don't want that in the, the, the harmony. I really want the harmony to be pretty flat with the low end rolled out and actually some of the high end rolled out because it helps to disguise the fact that it's an artificial harmony a bit. So let's listen to this uh, a cappella and then I'll play it back with the whole song in. With every turn I seek an answer to the past. These wasted days with you been putting myself last. But all that's gone and never again will I be torn. Between the wall and you and me, a bridge that must be burned. And there you go. Let's listen to it uh, in context with the whole song kicked in. With every turn I seek an answer to the best. These wasted days with you been putting myself left. All right, so that is my tutorial on creating backing harmonies, artificial backing harmonies in Melodyne to harmonize a lead vocal without actually having to go back and re-sing the harmony. Again, like I said before, I want to stress that this is not necessarily a better or worse way of doing this in comparison to just singing the vocals in. It's really up to the style of the song, the genre of the song, and the feel of the song. You can also kind of go crazy with this. You can, you know, you can triple your lead vocal and try to create two different harmonies and pan them left and right. You can create four harmonies. The only problem uh, you'll run into is the further you shift these notes up or down, down, the more glitchy they're going to sound, the more robotic they're going to sound. Um, one quick thing you can play with to try to normalize the tone is you can play around with the Formant tool if you have a version of Melodyne that supports this, and you can pull up or down the Formants to make the vocal sound a little deeper or a little brighter. So if you have, say, a harmony that you've pulled up, you can pull the format back down to normalize the tone a bit so it doesn't sound so much like a chipmunk's singing it. So anyway, guys, that's my uh, tutorial on creating backing harmonies, artificial backing harmonies with Melodyne. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave me a like and subscribe to the channel. You can also make a contribution on Patreon if you like. If you'd like to get your hands on this session or my entire Logic 101 series videos and session, I'll leave links to that in the video description below. Again, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Happy New Year, and thanks for watching.